Everyone loves a good mystery, the idea that there is more to something than meets the eye. It might be because we're so used to having the answers to everything at our fingertips nowadays, but there is something about a puzzle and finding a solution that just scratches that itch for a lot of people in a way that little else can. The internet, for better or for worse, has become home to a lot of mysteries. Not just by providing a place where we can all research and collate our information on mysteries from the real world, but as a place that generates strange situations all on their own. There have been plenty of examples over the years of websites, pages, and just stories that exist entirely online that have baffled and stayed with those that experienced them for years after the fact. And it could be argued that Cicada 3301 is one of the most mysterious ones that have ever popped up. And that is exactly what we're looking into today. As with a lot of the more interesting content on the internet, the Cicada 3301 saga can trace its roots back to one of the most infamous places on the net, the boards of 4chan. It's always 4chan if you didn't know. For good or for bad, a lot of what is famous, enduring, and let's say memorable on the internet can be traced back to here in one way or another. The date is January 2nd, 2012, and the following message appeared in white text on a black background, what would become the group's most signature design. Hello, we are looking for highly intelligent individuals. To find them, we have devised a test. There is a message hidden in this image. Find it and it will lead you on the road to finding us. We look forward to meeting the few that will make it all the way through. Good luck, 3301. As to how you went about solving this puzzle, well, even following along with the published and verified solution, it gets complicated extremely quickly. Far more complicated than even I am capable of understanding, which now that I've said that out loud, that sounds really douchey. Anyways, how anyone, far less multiple people, were able to get all the way through just shows how elite the minds they were searching for actually were. If we follow along the solution published on boxandtrick.com, and I'll post like a link to that, then the first step is to download the invitation image and run it through a text extraction tool. This yields the text Tibervis Claudius Caesar. Not exactly how you say that, but hey, that's how I say that. Amongst a string of otherwise random seeming numbers, uh, which then tells the solver the exact type of cipher that will be being used on the text. By plugging the seemingly random text string into the Caesar cipher, it generates a link to an image hosted on the site IMGUR, or IMGUR, or whatever you want to call it. When the first solvers got as far as this and excitedly plugged the link into their browser, the image of a duck popping up must have elicited a groan from the more seasoned 4chan users. Was this complex riddle nothing more than an elaborate duck roll, the precursor to the much more famous widespread Rick roll? Fortunately not. While the image itself contained the text, whoops, just decoys this way, looks like you can't guess how to get the message out, there was in fact a lot more of the rabbit hole to go down. People successfully worked out there was a stenography tool called Outguess and picked these two words out of the message as their hint to use it. And for those of us who had no idea what stenography was before this, here's a definition that was given by techtarget.com. The technique of hiding data within an ordinary non-secret file or a message to avoid detection. Essentially, it is the art of managing to obscure a secret message within a seemingly innocuous or innocent looking file that is accessible to everyone, where only those with the knowledge and ability to look further will pick up that extra information. How exactly this tool works and the methodology it uses is beyond the scope of this video, but boxandtrick.com assures us that this tool spits out a book code and a series of numerical references. For any who want the exact ins and outs of this solution beyond this point, please visit the article linked in the description because it only gets more complicated from here. But here's a brief overview that shows just how expansive this first version of the puzzle was. The codebook was found in a specially made subreddit alongside some images, and the first examples of this message were the people behind Cicada 3301, which they used their specific and unspoofable signature. This would serve to differentiate between the authentic posts and the messages that were from the group, or really just any trying to impersonate them. There were more images, text disguised by ciphers, solutions involving prime numbers, and Mayan numbers as well as text from an obscure piece of literature book about King Arthur. Again, we are skipping over and trivializing what is in fact very complicated and detailed, solving like basically the whole puzzle at this point. So just understand that just within the last few minutes of talking, this was collectively a bunch of human brains that would beat quantum computers in solving this. That's because human brains are uh, way better than quantum computers, probably. Following these and many other steps, a phone number was found that played a short message with another riddle that pointed solvers to a website with a countdown.
Very good. You have done well. There are three prime numbers associated with the original final dot JPEG image. 3301 is one of them. You will have to find the other two. Multiply all three of these numbers together and add a dot com on the end to find the next step. Good luck. Goodbye. When the countdown reached zero, the website updated to show coordinates related to real life locations. And given that these locations were in Europe, Asia, and the US as well as Australia, this was where the collaboration of the international solvers came into their own. Each of the locations was visited and they found a poster with a trademark image of a cicada and a QR code. More riddles followed referencing to similarly obscure texts and ciphers tied up in bizarre pieces of hard to obtain literature and eventually directions to access an address on the Tor network. Those that successfully got this far were met with the following message. Congratulations. Please create a new email address with a public free web-based service, one you've never used before and enter it below. We recommend you do this while still using Tor for anonymity. We will email you with a number within the next few days in the order in which you arrived at this page. Once you have received it, come back to this page and append a slash and then the number you received to this URL. For example, if you received 3894894230934209, then you would go to http slash slash http slash sq6wmgv2zcsrix6t dot onion slash 3894892309342209 and then it just ends with 3301. So basically, I just read you a giant URL. You're welcome. Beyond this, there were more puzzles sent out individually to those who had gotten this far and set up emails as requested, including a music-based one, but the exact ins and outs were only based on really what those who got this far have shared. Eventually, a final message was posted, which concluded the puzzle, at least for the first year. Hello, we have now found the individuals that we sought. Thus, our month-long journey ends. For now, thank you for your dedication and effort. If you were unable to complete the test or did not receive an email, do not despair. There will be more opportunities like this one. Thank you all, 3301. And that served as the conclusion for the first year. At least, at the end of the first iteration of the puzzle, there are testimonies from people who claim to have gotten all the way through the process and then say they were recruited to a software team. No specifics are offered other than to say it was geared towards IT security in some form or fashion. Now, I mean, that's totally possible because typically when you go into anything security related, you're gonna sign an NDA, which means uh, they can sue you if you talk too much about it. I sign NDAs all the time, which means I could be sued if I talk about things. So you just kind of don't. But the appeal and the hype that it generated, or at least in one small corner of the internet, had many more eyes ready and waiting to see if there would be a follow-up the next year. Then came the next installment. The next year, in 2013, a dedicated subreddit was created, which still exists today at reddit.com slash r slash cicada. Here, those curious about the puzzles could compare notes and theories on what it was all about. And almost an exact year after the first riddle appeared, Cicada returned with another similar image to start the whole process over again. On the 4th of January, a familiar looking post appeared with phrasing somewhat similar to the first, again on the boards of 4chan and once again with a white writing on a black background. Hello again, our search for intelligence individuals now continues. The first clue is hidden within this image. Find it and it will lead you to the road to finding us. We look forward to meeting the few that will make it all the way through. Good luck. 3301. The premise and process of cracking the code was similar in a lot of ways to the first year, and if the technical intricacies of the solving interest you, then you can find the full details in the same place as the first one. To give a very brief overview, again, quantum computers versus human brains, there were ciphers, books on the occult, and the seemingly ever-present outguess and downloadable files. There were a few strings that led solvers to a Twitter account with seemingly random strings of letters and numbers as tweets. After more technical wizardry and solvers collectively working out the next few steps, they were once again directed to a dot .onion site. The exact details of how these clues were deduced is either fairly complicated if you are you know, working with a knowledge of hex code and binary or completely baffling to the majority of internet users, such as myself. There is no shot I would have figured this out. 
Again, there are steps that vary from incomprehensible to potentially genius if you possess the knowledge to understand them. Again, I don't. And I'd encourage you again to look up the intricate details of exactly what was done if you even have a passing interest. Because who knows? Maybe you'll have a Jimmy Neutron brain blast and you'll be the guy that solves the very last one because nobody else has. Eventually, there was a real-world coordinate spat out like the first time, leading to five U.S. locations as well as one in Russia and Japan. Again, there was the famous logo and phone numbers, although they had additional access codes that referenced back to a table that had been deciphered earlier in the puzzle. And I told you, it's far more complicated than can really be adequately expressed here, but I'm basically giving you the quick and dirty. So the end result, after another few brain-melting deductions, was a quick-fire quiz that respondents had to complete. Depending on their answers, some were contacted by the group later, and once again, this marked the end of the trail for the second year. Similar to the first time around, there were various reports from alleged successful candidates that claimed to have gotten all the way through and said they were tasked with various software work for the shadowy group, but these remained unconfirmed. While the interest in the ongoing tale grew among some internet users uh, when the puzzle appeared for the third year, there were two things that became immediately apparent. The first was there were more eyes on it every year and as such more chances for people to work together to pool their mental resources. But the second thing that was really evident was the difficulty of the puzzle had increased dramatically. As it would happen, the third and final year was the first time that, at least as far as anyone can tell, no one managed to solve it all the way through to completion. Or at least, not as far as the group behind the mystery or any solver had openly admitted. Again. Around the same fateful date as the two previous times, uh, January the 6th, the year of 2014, marked the publication of the third and ultimately final riddle. A Twitter post went up with the now familiar white writing on a black background reading, Hello, epiphany is upon you. Your pilgrimage has begun. Enlightenment awaits. Good luck. 3301. It's now becoming a little more strange. An indication of just how difficult and complex the solution was becoming became clear when the group published a hint to the solvers, something that had never been done before to this point. Another full year passed, and the group published a second hint in January of 2016, now with two full years having passed without any successful solves. Kind of what this sounds like to me, and I'm just going to go ahead and spitball it, is there was something so obscure and kind of intrinsically personal to the creators of this puzzle that to them, it's kind of like a bias. Uh, it seemed like, oh, well, people should be able to get it, but the reality is, is that nobody would understand it because it was just personal to them. Perhaps they were relying on people that they had already hired, uh, if they did hire anybody, and this isn't just an elaborate prank, it's just a prank, bro, to actually maybe leak information on how to, like, solve it, but nobody ended up doing it. So, it could be that, but we'll get it there in a second. So, the usual rabbit hole started from the original image and involved numerical wizardry, text, and various codes, as well as ciphers of all the descriptions. Again, there was a dot .onion site, as usual, to visit, images to examine, and run through various programs, and all the while, the ever-present official signature of the group embedded at key points to let searchers know that they were still on the right tracks. However, somewhere amongst the hex editors, the plugins and data extraction would just come to a dead end. Even with the hints eventually released by the group after no progress could be made, it seemed as though the final iteration was eventually unsolvable. One of the great mysteries involves Liberus Primus, or First Book, which contains more than 70 pages. Solvers only managed to successfully decode about 20 of them, leaving the vast majority as yet uncracked and unsolved. So, with the puzzle at a seeming standstill, now might be a good time to ask, what exactly had it been all about? Obviously, with so many eyes on the mystery and the interest only growing as the puzzles became more known, there have been many different theories proposed as to what exactly Cicada 3301 was. The most straightforward and yet unlikely one is that it was nothing more than what it appeared on the surface, just a puzzle, albeit a very intricate and complex one designed to be difficult yet solvable. After all, even on the internet, there doesn't have to be some profound and in-depth meaning to, like, everything. For instance, there is no ulterior motive to the Times crossword or killer Sudoku. They are just to scratch an itch that is hardwired into the brains of a lot of us. Find the answer to this arbitrary question, and figuring out, beating others who are trying to do the same thing, and getting a sense of satisfaction after really is all done. I mean, that's the reward that you need. Many pointed out that during World War II, while the code breakers for the war efforts were recruited from intellectuals and math wizards through conventional means, there were also examples of very difficult crosswords and other similar mundane puzzles that agencies used to recruit those with the correct sort of mindset for what they were requiring. Some thought it was worldwide recruitment tool of some sort, maybe the work of letter agencies from various countries. You know, 
the Glowies. The evidence against this is fairly compelling, though. There are issues with how it was set out and the attention that it brought in the public sphere. Any government agency would essentially be putting a lot of trust in random people on the internet to keep their lips sealed. The very nature of the sort of person that would possess the skill set and interest to solve this sort of puzzle meant that it was not exactly likely to, like, swear themselves to secrecy. Many who would take the time and effort to decipher these codes and follow the white rabbit as far as it went would tend to skew away from regulation, rules, and hoarding of knowledge on the internet. Most in that very distinct sphere and group are vehemently against secrecy, both on the internet and in real life, and most would advocate against the sort of groups that have been suggested as using it as a recruitment tool. There is always a chance that someone would betray their morals for the right sum of money, but when many work under aliases and anonymously on the internet, money may not be the final goal. Is any amount of money worth the clout and recognition that you would get from solving the allegedly unsolvable puzzle and then blowing the lid on the whole thing? Telling your compatriots and fellow puzzlers that it was actually all a CIA or MI5 recruitment plot, or maybe even FBI, or it's the Freeman. No, okay, anyways. So specific people have been suggested as being behind it, and generally, it is the sort of people that would be for freedom of the internet. Julia Assange, Edward Snowden, Richard Doty. It should be noted that not only has no single person ever confirmed as being the architect behind the whole thing, as far as we know, no member of the group has ever officially been identified in any meaning way. So it's kind of like, well, who did it? So if the solution to the third iteration of the puzzle series has ever been found, then the person or people have not gone public with it. Most of this comes down to just how obscure the riddle had become by this stage. In fact, given some of the complications that the very like capable minds had come up against when trying to solve the third puzzle, there are some that think this might just be truly unsolvable. Or possibly, the final code is, you gotta go and talk to a woman. <laughs> The final message to the group, complete with their signature to verify its authenticity, was in April of 2017 simply saying beware false paths. And that was a joke earlier. I know smart people talk to women. Anyways, they followed this with an urge to always look for their PGP signature. And other than a vague promise to give out more hints in 2024, which, <laughs> hey, we're there, there has been radio silence. And again, it's only almost February. By the time this comes out, it'll be February. But that is pretty much where the story of Cicada 3301 ends. Not with some world-shattering revelation, or even with the final solution to the last puzzle. As far as anyone has been able to tell or like figure out, it's just sort of fizzled out. That isn't to say it hasn't left a lasting legacy though, and not only on the internet. There have been similar types of mysteries that have caught on to similar effects. All that we're really left with in the end is the last puzzle without any official solution, and not a single official word from the group behind the entire experience for a number of years. If their last message is proven to be accurate, that they have promised to release another hint this year in 2024. When this is due, or what form it will take, is anyone's guess. I'm gonna guess, I'm gonna go ahead and say it. I think late June it's gonna come out. That's my official prediction. So while the mystery of the puzzle, uh, or what function it sought to serve, is really kind of an unknown, it might be fair to say that the interest in it has fluctuated over the years. If you follow it back on Google Trends, you can see there are spikes and dips. Every single year, a new group of people will find out about Cicada 3301 and then go down the rabbit hole. It is still open to debate exactly what the project hoped to account for, but based on the comments of one of these successful solvers in 2012's initial puzzle, once he had answered a raft of questions about issues like censorship and internet anonymity, he was invited to work on a project with the team. According to him, he didn't ever complete his allocated work, and he had nothing to do with it anymore. While it seems fairly unlikely that it was ever a recruitment drive by any government organization, it's possible that some people believe that's exactly what it was. Over the course of multiple years, the project successfully singled out individuals who had extremely unique skill sets and brains that were wired to solve these intricate riddles. And would these sort of people not be a great asset to any agency anywhere around the world? The answer is yes. And although we may be left without any concrete closure when it comes to this, for any that are interested in it, all hope isn't lost. The information of past solves and the progress people have made with the most recent riddle are all readily available online. The hints posted by the group over the last few years are there to help you on your journey. And if you figure it out, let me know. So while the consensus may be that this last riddle is so complex that it is nigh unsolvable, there is always a chance that someone out there has the exact skill set and resources to make sense of it and crack the riddle once and for all. And with another clue being promised in 2024, there is arguably no better time to get your teeth into what has become known as the internet's most baffling puzzle. In the end, the true end goal of Cicada 3301 group and the riddles that they pose on the internet over the years don't really matter. 
The challenge has always been in figuring out exactly what the solution is, and that can be enough of a reward in and of itself. But I want to thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed, then leave a like would be fantastic of you, and subscribing is a great way to stay up to date on when I post. I wish I could solve a cicada puzzle. Uh, my mother loves riddles. I did not get those genes. I got the trivia genes, which are basically, I can remember a lot of things, but when it comes to, like, applications, it gets a little more dicey. But, uh, I am officially back on Roanoke Tales. Uh, 2024 is gonna be the year I'm actually going to be posting consistently and every single week because, uh, I need to. <laughs> I need, like, I would like to see this channel grow, and I hope you join me on that journey. Uh, but I would like to thank my patrons also who stuck around when I didn't post for, like, two weeks. So at the literal Wendigo tier, we have Grayson West and Trash Panda in a trench coat. Thank you, sirs. I do appreciate it. Then at the Eyewitness to the Events, we have Beaver Malaga, Wet Skeleton, and at the first-hand accounts, we have Cody Cherry Drake, Kanan Johnson at the second-hand accounts, as well as Fred Rush and Justice Davis with Troy. All right, that's going to do it for me. Thank you guys for your patronage. You guys are absolute ballers. I'm going to wrap it up here, and I'll see y'all in the next one.